Alright everybody, how's it going and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another United match preview. United are making the trip all the way down to the south coast to face off against Mark Hughes' Southampton side tomorrow evening in the late kickoff in the Premier League at the St Mary's Stadium. And United kind of need to get back on track with things in the Premier League. And on the, at least on paper, this could provide a massive opportunity to get back on winning ways but that all de depends on what United side end up turning up to the St Mary's Stadium tomorrow afternoon but before we get stuck into things looking ahead at that game make sure to drop a like on this video it really helps me out and really gets the video out there to more and more people so if you could help the channel grow a little bit and drop that like that would be really really appreciated and if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button as well so United have been in pretty indifferent form in the Premier League at least over the last couple of games, uh, Manchester City before the international break losing there to our noisy neighbours and then after the international break in a game which we should have been winning pretty comfortably really against the poor Crystal Palace side we ended up dropping two points in a shambles of a display. Picked up a little bit in midweek in the Champions League with a 1-0 win even though we left it really really late against young boys but we we're back on winning ways. Hopefully that has that win in midweek has kind of kicked the players up the backside a little bit because on Saturday against Crystal Palace, I was there at Old Trafford and it was just, they just didn't, they just looked completely devoid of any sort of ideas or any sort of, any sort of urgency really. Even when we were, even when we were getting towards the end of the game and it's nil nil in the past where we've seen United, United really bombard the opposition box to try and get all three points. We just didn't see that. Now, that's worrying because in the past, even under Marino, we have seen that. So to not see that in a game which was pretty important, it was, as Mourinho had stated in the press conference, one of these must-win eight games to get us back into the contention for the top four. So to stumble at that first hurdle was really, really disappointing, especially in the manner that we did. Now... Like I say, in midweek it was a little bit different. The entire uh, the lineup pretty much was changed, other than Martial, uh, Lingard, and David De Gea. Uh, it was pretty much all chopped and changed, and we certainly looked better in the first 20, 25 minutes. There was a little bit more intensity to our play, a little bit more energy as well, which was lacking against Crystal Palace. So whether we see any of those that started on Tuesday evening against Young Boys start tomorrow evening against Southampton that remains to be seen because it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of the players who did set out the game against Young Boys come straight back in which is a little bit unfortunate I feel for the players that were uh, that started the game on Tuesday but like I say it's it's another big game for United and uh, like I say on paper at least it is a great opportunity to get back on winning ways and start to start to get some sort of form together and not only that when you look at the games we've got beyond tomorrow's against Southampton you've got we've got the likes of Arsenal coming up the likes of Liverpool coming up and then we've got tricky away trips which shouldn't be tricky or at least on paper but knowing United so far this season the games against Cardiff who can't win a game and Fulham who are in terrible form I wouldn't, I wouldn't be entirely confident of United going there and getting a win. We should, of course, given the players that we've got and the teams that we're facing. But we've seen in the past that doesn't matter a jot to this United side because it could be it's so Jekyll and Hyde, it's untrue. So we really need to start making these winnable games count because we've let that slip far too often this season. Brighton away from home. Wolves at home, Crystal Palace at home to name but three, where we could have really picked up all three points and should have picked up all three points in every single one of those games, if I'm being honest. But, like I say, at least on paper, this game against Southampton resembles a great chance to get back on winning ways because Southampton are in some terrible form. They've not won a game in any competition in the last 11 games. They've drawn a couple here and there, but they've not picked up a win since the 1st of September, which has led a lot of speculation to go against 
Mark Hughes. Um, he's not had the greatest of times since coming into the managerial hot seat at St Mary's. P didn't look, really look the greatest of, of appointments when it was actually made, if I'm being honest. And it's kind of proved that way with Southampton now sitting in uh, 18th position in the relegation zone, two spaces up from the bottom. And I just I can't see a way of them really getting out of this. I think they'll struggle. I had them battling against relegation and actually slipping down to the championship and it wouldn't surprise me if that was a case at the end of the season as far as star players they've only really got one player we need to keep an eye on and that is uh, as far as star players they've only really got one player we need to keep an eye on and that's Danny Ings he's the top goal scorer with five goals this season but other than that they've not really got any sort of attacking threat they've got the second lowest goal scored record in the Premier League which is kind of contributing to where they are in the league table but obviously we have to deal with we, we have to pay them a little bit of respect but as far as actual individual threats there's only really Danny Ings and if we can keep him quiet and keep the supply line quiet and if we can isolate their centre-backs which I think are really really can be really really got at if we can isolate those centre-backs and get the likes of Lukaku, Martial, Rashford, Lingard, whoever running at them and isolating them one-on-one, -on -one, I think we could see a lot of joy for United in this Southampton side if we actually play to our own capabilities. And that kind of brings us nicely onto the team that I'd like to see us line up with tomorrow against Southampton. Now, there's been a couple of bits of news that have come out with the likes of Alexis Sanchez suffering a hamstring injury and that could be his 2018 and possibly even his United career over with with a lot of speculation linking him to Paris Saint-Germain that could we could have seen the last of Alexis Sanchez in a United, in United shirt but what is for certain is he's going to miss the next few games so he is completely ruled out of the game against Southampton and Diogo Dallo will be starting against Southampton thank God that I don't think we'll have to put up with Valencia or Ashley Young at right fullback for any longer hopefully hopefully Delo comes in and does a decent job and nails down that right back spot because I think we are a, a 10 times better side with both fullbacks being able to provide some sort of attacking threat in the final third so I think Diogo so basically the starting 11 I think we'll line up with is David Dayer in goal who's Recently triggered the year extension in his contract. Hopefully, we can get him to sign a full new contract as soon as possible because where we would be without David De Gea, I've no idea. Because, yet again, against young boys, he bailed us out of the shit with, a, with one of the greatest saves I've ever seen. Because for 99.9% ev for of people, that looked like it was sailing into the back of the net. He claws it out. And without that, I don't think we're going to get the win against young boys. And that's just the effect that David De Gea has on this United side. Best goalkeeper in the world. Hopefully we sign him up to a new contract. Get it signed, Ed. Now, I'd like I said, Dallo at right fullback. Centre-backs, I think we're going to persist with Jones and Smalling. I don't think they had a particularly bad game against uh, young boys. Don't think they were up against all that much. If I'm being honest, I think this will be a bit more of a test. Um, I'd much prefer to see... Eric Bay instead of Phil Jones, but that's not on the cards, and it looks like Eric Bay could be on his way out of Old Trafford. Left back, hopefully Luke Shaw continues against his old club. Uh, it'd be really nice to see him, and hopefully get a decent reception from Southampton fans, although I wouldn't put money on it. Central midfield, now this is the midfield I hope we see. I hope we see Marouane Fellaini in the number six role, with Nemanja Matic finally dropped. I doubt it's going to happen. But that's what I want to see. And then, ideally, I want to see Fred and Pogba ahead of him. It's a little bit more of an attacking midfield than I would usually want us to play in an away game. But Southampton, I think, are there for the taking if we can start on the front foot. So I would like to see Fred with his passing ability and Pogba with his creativity in that midfield. And it could really make the difference against this Saints side. Then, the front three, I would go with Anthony Martial on the left-hand side. Obviously, there's not going to be any Alexis Sanchez for the for the next couple of weeks or months or what have you. So, Martial on the left-hand side. Lukaku come, coming back in in the centre-forward role because I just don't think at this moment in time that Marcus Rashford... 
I, 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 he's, he's the way United set up. They need their centre forwards to be clinical because we don't create that many chances. And Lukaku isn't clinical, but nor is Rashford. And I think, I think we all know that Lukaku is going to come straight back in. And I think, whilst I do see Marcus Rashford as the future of Manchester United, I don't see him being able at this moment to lead the line for United on a consistent basis. The the movement's better with him there. But I think, especially away from home, I think you need someone with a bit of hold-up play. And I think Lukaku does that better than Rashford at this moment. Then on the right-hand side, I was it's really a toss-up between Lingard and Mata. With it being away from home, I probably would pre prefer to see a lineup with Lingard because of his defensive tracking back capabilities, which are better than Mata's. And he's a little bit quicker as well. At home, I would probably go with Juan Mata for his passing ability and his link-up play. But I think away from home, I think we, I think I would prefer us to see Lingard on that right-hand side as well, making those intelligent runs into the box and linking up with the likes of Martial and Lukaku. And that starting lineup, if it performs to its full potential, is more than capable of going getting a result against Southampton at St Mary's and actually starting to lift a bit of the frustration and the doom and gloom surrounding United at the moment. We all know that Mourinho is probably not going to be in charge next season. So I just want us to I just want us to play a little bit a little bit a little bit more freedom because we have nothing to lose at this moment. We're eighth in the table or seventh in the table Chances are we're not going to get top four. And what we've been doing prior to this, where we've been playing a little bit negative and a little bit boring and a little bit, or at least in the last couple of weeks anyway, with not really much creativity, hasn't done us any favours. So throw the rule book out the window and just let United and the players actually just give them a bit of free reign and let them express themselves because that is how I think this United side would improve. Because there's too many players there that need a little bit of freedom and can't, I don't think, can perform in Mourinho's rigid defensive worry about them before they worry about us system and mentality. So I would like us to chuck the rulebook out the window and just actually go for it in games, especially games against the likes of Southampton. I mean, we should have saw it last week against Crystal Palace because obviously against the bigger sides, Arsenal and Arsenal and Liverpool, uh, coming up soon, I think we will set up with a bit more pragmatic and I can understand that because obviously we've got more to worry about against those big sides than we have against the likes of Southampton who struggled to score and not trying to be bang a dead horse but last week against Crystal Palace who struggled to score goals and we set up with two central defensive midfielders or at least Pogba playing deeper than he should have done. So I want us to try something a bit different. I want us to express ourselves a little bit more and like I say if we can isolate those centre-backs of, of Southampton I think we could get a lot of joy as far as the scoreline I'm going to be positive because I think Southampton are a dreadful side so at the moment anyway at least with the form uh, under, under Mark Hughes I think United are going to win I'm going to go with a 3-1 Manchester United win I'm not sure we'll keep a clean sheet not with Laura Lenardi at centre-back reunited but I think we will have enough to come away from the South Coast with all three points. And hopefully that sets us up a little bit better for the big game against Arsenal in midweek. So let me know in the comment section what your starting eleven would be. Do you agree with mine? Do you not agree with mine? Let me know in the comment section. Who would you have starting up front? Lukaku or Rashford? Bang it in the comment section. Also, let me know what you think the scoreline is going to be. And if you've enjoyed these and you want to see more of them, drop a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. I'll be back after the game with my reactions. But other than that, take it easy and I'll catch you next time.